The Loud House is like a roller coaster ride through a family funhouse, but instead of cotton candy, you get a big scoop of chaos. Picture Lincoln Loud, the middle child, navigating through the whirlwind of craziness in a family with 11, yes, 11 siblings. It's our track to find peace and quiet in a candy store during a sugar rush. In the Loud House, every day is an adventure, and you better buckle up because you're in for a laughter filled roller coaster ride with this wacky, wild, and wonderfully chaotic family. Before we move on to the episodes, let's introduce the sisters, cause there are a lot of them. We've got Lori, the bossy older sister, Lini, the fashionista with a heart of gold, Luna, the rock star who probably practices guitar riffs in her sleep, Luan, the prankster who turns every day into April Fools. Lynn, the sports maniac who could turn your living room into a mini football field. Lucy is the goth poet who could probably write a sonnet about a black cat crossing her path. Lana and Lola, the twins with opposite interests but double the trouble. Lisa, the genius scientist who might be plotting world domination in her spare time. And finally, Lily, the baby who knows how to steal the show with just a cute girl. And then there's Lincoln, who's caught in this never-ending whirlwind of chaos. Things often get out of control for our little hero, so sometimes he has to invite his best friend Clyde McBride for assistance. Let's dive into the episodes and see how he manages his day-to-day -day life in the Loud House. Perfect. In the first episode, Lincoln wants to watch his favorite TV show, but his sisters are arguing. He tries to get the remote, but forgets about one sister, Lucy, who beats him to it. Lincoln then tries to move Lucy to another TV, but accidentally causes a power outage. The sisters think there's a ghost and turn to Lincoln for help. With his friend Clyde distracted by a crush, they find out the ghost is just a pile of laundry. When the power is back, Lincoln realizes he missed his show. His sisters comfort him, saying the shared experience matters more. They all watch a video Lincoln made together, but Lucy is left out once more. In a following episode, Lincoln accidentally goes into Lori and Lini's room while playing a virtual reality game. Lori gets mad, and Lincoln, upset about his broken game, leaves an angry message on Lori's phone. When Lori apologizes and buys him a new game, Lincoln regrets the message and tries to delete it. To get into Lori's locked room, he comes up with a complicated plan with air vents, licorice ropes, and help from his friend Clyde. Despite some funny problems, like Clyde's nosebleed and Lori hearing strange noises, Lincoln hides in Lori's room. However, Lori finds a note calling her the worst sister ever, and she gets really mad while Luna plays her guitar to cover up the bad words. In heavy metal, Lincoln is dealing with a bully and tries to keep his secret. His sisters find out when the bully puts gum in his hair. Despite Lincoln wanting to handle it quietly, his sister Lisa tells everyone. The sisters give lots of advice and even confront a random boy they think is the bully. When Lincoln reveals the bully is a girl, the sisters think she likes him. They suggest he kisses her, but it doesn't go well and gets a black eye. Frustrated, Lincoln tells his sisters to stop interfering. Later, he discovers the girl, Ronnie Ann, really likes him, making him feel both embarrassed and surprised. In Driving Miss Hazy, we learn that Lori is the only one with a driver's license and she makes her siblings do things for her in exchange for rides. Lincoln wants to change this, so he decides to help Lini the only other sibling old enough to drive, pass her driving test. They use a video game and a pretend car to practice, but Lini has trouble with the technical terms. Lori tries to mess things up by playing a tape of bad driving habits. Lincoln talks to Lori about her selfish actions, and she realizes she made a mistake. Lori then helps Lini for real, wanting to fix things, but it'll be a lot easier said than done given that Lini has failed the driving test 13 times already. In No Guts, No Glory, we learn that Lori is quite bossy around the house. One day, Lori is in charge when their parents go out, and she makes a lot of strict rules. Lincoln, tired of Lori's strictness, decides to rebel and chaos ensues. The house quickly becomes a mess. Even though Lori doesn't like it at first, she realizes things are out of control. Lincoln and Lori join forces to clean up the mess before their parents come back, saving the day. In the episode Picture Perfect, Lincoln finds his dad's old camera and wants to take a perfect family photo for his parents' anniversary. However, when he tries to control how his sisters look and act, things go wrong. Eventually, Lincoln understands that being genuine is more important. In the end, he gives his parents a natural, unedited photo that truly shows his sister's personalities. His parents appreciate the heartfelt gesture, realizing the beauty of each sibling being themselves. In the episode, Undie Pressure, Lola challenges her siblings to a bet to stop their annoying habits. Each sibling faces funny challenges, and after a lot of hassle, it looks like Lincoln has won. However, he forgets about the youngest sibling, Lily, who wins by not crying. Even though Lincoln is disappointed, Lola surprises him by getting the victory undies he wants. The siblings go back to their habits, showing that these quirks make them unique. In For Bros About To Rock, Lincoln is excited about his first concert, with Clyde to see Semoj at the mall. Despite his sister's warning not to tell Luna cause apparently she ruins their experience, she already knows and even saves his spot for them in line. 
Luna tries to prepare them for the concert, but Lincoln finds it embarrassing and upsets Luna. At the ticket office, they find no tickets and end up in mall jail after buying from a scalper. Luna, in disguise, bails them out, but her cover is blown, and they all end up in jail. Luna apologizes, sharing her first concert story, and the mall cop captain releases them with tickets to the concert. Luna helps them get to the front row, and they even join the band on stage. In It's a Loud, 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 Loud House, the Loud siblings get excited when Lincoln finds a letter suggesting hidden money from the previous owner, Sharon Demonet. They fight over it, and their dad punishes them by making them clean the attic. While cleaning, Lincoln discovers another letter hinting at a hidden stash and encourages them to work together. The sisters, initially doubtful, team up and follow clues to find $500 buried in the backyard. They decide to share it equally, learning about teamwork. However, it turns out their dad set up the whole thing to teach them a lesson about cooperation, and the money was his own bonus. Despite the trick, the siblings celebrate being united. In a fair to remember, Lori is excited about a date with a guy named Bobby, but he suggests a monster truck rally, which she finds unromantic. Lori sends Lincoln in her place, and they surprisingly hit it off. However, Lori feels left out as Bobby keeps inviting Lincoln on their dates, when she sees them having fun without her, Lori tries to make Bobby jealous using an unconscious Clyde as her date. The plan backfires when Clyde ends up in an emergency and Lori thinks she lost Bobby. However, Lincoln's sacrifice of his bro time with Bobby makes Lori realize he's a great brother and expresses her gratitude. In Save the Date, Lincoln finds a sloppy Joe in his pants with a love note from Ronnie Ann. His classmates tease him, but he denies having feelings for her. When Lincoln's comments make Ronnie Ann cry, Lori reveals she's Bobby's sister. Lori arranges a double date to mend things. Clyde's antics complicate the dinner, but Lincoln kisses Ronnie Ann publicly to show he cares. Bobby and Lori reconcile. However, Ronnie Ann fakes a breakup to stop teasing from Lincoln's friends about having a girlfriend. In the price of admission, Lincoln wants to watch a scary movie, The Harvester, but his mom says it's too scary for him. Despite this, he disobeys and sneaks into the theater to watch it. The movie terrifies him, and he tries to keep his secret from his parents. That night, he can't sleep and tries to bond with his sisters unsuccessfully. The next morning, he confesses to his parents, expecting punishment. Surprisingly, they decide to watch The Harvester together as a family. They forgive him, considering his sleepless night as enough punishment, and they all go to the cinema to watch a different movie. In one flu of the loud house, Lincoln wakes up to find chaos in the house, with several of his sisters infected by the flu. He discovers that Lori sneezed on Lynn's basketball, causing a chain reaction of infections among his siblings. Lincoln, along with the healthy sisters, plans to escape the infected house. However, Lincoln gets sick to protect Lini from Luna's sneeze. Eventually, the whole Loud family catches the flu, but Clyde, wearing a hazmat suit, comes to help them get better. In Eleven Loud's a Leapin', Lincoln realizes that his grumpy neighbor, Mr. Grouse, is lonely during the holidays. Despite some challenges, including a broken sled and Mr. Grouse being initially reluctant, Lincoln, his sisters, Clyde, and the McBride family team up to spread Christmas cheer. They sing and support Mr. Grouse, who is deeply moved by their gesture. Inspired, Mr. Grouse joins them for a festive celebration. The Loud family learns the true meaning of Christmas, kindness, compassion, and the importance of family and friends. They exchange gifts, share laughter, and mend relationships, making it a memorable and joyful Christmas for everyone in Royal Woods. In the episode Sweet and Sour, Mr. Loud and Rita plan a rare weekend spa getaway, leaving the Loud kids with Aunt Ruth. Unhappy about missing out, Lincoln comes up with a plan involving a play to convince their parents to take them along. However, chaos ensues as the kids wreak havoc at the spa, causing various mishaps. From elevator races to haunted hotel adventures, each sibling contributes to the mayhem. In the end, Rita and Lynn Sr. ground them, and the kids decide to make it up to their parents by turning their living room into a makeshift spa. In Back in Black, Lincoln is working hard on a school project about the solar system when Lucy accidentally spills fake blood on it. Lincoln's friend Rusty and his younger brother Rocky team up to help fix the project. Lucy develops a crush on Rocky and tries to impress him, leading to funny misadventures. Lucy's sisters find out about her crush and want her to seem regular and normal, so they give her a makeover. Despite their efforts, Lucy's attempts to impress Rocky during a mini-golf outing go wrong, ruining the trip. Eventually, Lucy's family tells her they love her just the way she is, emphasizing the importance of being true to oneself. In patching things up, Lana and Lola are excited to become official Bluebell Scouts and earn patches for different tasks. However, Lola struggles with the challenges, leading to funny mishaps. Lincoln and Clyde, wanting bluebell cookies, join in under the guise of support. The episode is filled with humorous misunderstandings, and the boys are constantly after the cookies. In the end, Lana and Lola realize the true reward is their strong, sisterly bond. 
Their scout leader awards them the faithful friendship patch, making them official Bluebell Scouts and highlighting the importance of their relationship. In Cheater by the Dozen, Lincoln and Clyde think Bobby is cheating on Lori when they see him with different girls. The sisters team up to gather evidence, taking out places and taking photos. When they confront Bobby, he explains it's related to his jobs and planning a special date for Lori. They realize their mistake, fearing Lori's reaction. However, Lori appreciates their concern, and to make up for the chaos, Lincoln and Clyde end up working in the kitchen, while Lori and Bobby enjoy their date. And back out there, Lincoln's friends notice he's acting strange, thinking he has post-breakup blues over Ronnie Ann. To help him, they come up with a plan involving a boys' night out, meeting new people, and staying in a fancy hotel. However, Lincoln's actions lead to embarrassing situations. They realize their mistake when they accidentally intercept a call from Ronnie Ann and apologize. Lincoln admits he misses her, and she pranks him with a pie, showing their unique friendship. In the episode Spell It Out, Lucy feels left out when her siblings make decisions at a meeting she missed. Upset, she finds her great-grandma Harriet's spell book and tries to use it for revenge. However, her spells backfire, causing unintended problems for her siblings. They reveal they lost their voices cheering at a shuffle ward match, not due to Lucy's spells. Realizing her mistake, Lucy apologizes and her siblings apologize for not considering her feelings. They bond by watching Lucy's favorite show, and she decides to put the spell book away, expressing love for her family. On Halloween, Lincoln and Clyde want the best candy at Huntington Manor. They disguise themselves as British residents to deceive bullies Hank and Hawk, sending them to the wrong place. Lincoln's sisters, unaware of the plan, mistakenly think the bullies vandalized Lucy's corn maze. Later, they discover the bullies stole everyone's candy. Despite getting a beating, Lincoln and Clyde, with Lucy's spooky skills, scare the bullies away and save Halloween for everyone. In the end, they share their hard-earned candy with the community. In the episode Snow Way Out, Lana wants a spot on race car driver Bobby Fletcher's pit crew, so she leads her siblings to Burpin Burger for a contest. The challenge is to find a special hamburger wrapper. The lab kids try various funny methods to win but face setbacks. Lana's determination pays off when Lini discovers the winning wrapper. However, they get snowed in, and the old man Flip offers help in exchange for the wrapper. Lana sacrifices the rapper for their safety, and her selflessness impresses Bobby Fletcher, earning Lana a spot on the pit crew in the future. In Snow Way Down on a winter vacation with Clyde and his dads, Lincoln sees how overprotective Howard and Harold are. They go to great lengths to ensure safety, even preventing slips on icy patches. Lincoln tries to tell Clyde about it, but Clyde defends his dads. Realizing they've gone too far, Clyde convinces his dads to ease up. However, chaos ensues when Lincoln encourages Clyde to prove himself on the risky ramp of insanity. Thinking Clyde is in danger, they rush to rescue him, only to find out they misunderstood. Clyde, showing newfound independence, saves them with his inventive skills. Howard and Harold apologize and promise to let Clyde have more freedom, ending the day with carefree winter fun. In the episode The Loudest Mission, Relative Chaos, Laura goes with Lincoln to say goodbye to his friend Bobby and Bobby's sister Ronnie Ann, who are visiting their extended family in Great Lakes City for the weekend. While Lori and Bobby find it hard to be apart temporarily, Ronnie Ann and Lincoln, even though they say they're not dating, don't mind being away for a bit. In Great Lakes City, Bobby and Ronnie Ann get a warm welcome from their big and quirky Casagrin family, including Maria, Hector, Carlos, Frida, and the kids. Ronnie Ann feels a bit overwhelmed by all the close-knit family stuff. At the end of the weekend, Maria surprises everyone by saying she has a job offer in Great Lakes City, and they are invited to move in with the Casagrams. Bobby decides to take a permanent job at the bodega there. Even though Ronnie Ann is unsure at first, Bobby's plan for their future convinces Lori and Lincoln to support the move. The Casa Grannies make Ronnie Ann feel at home by creating a special space for her, and she decides to embrace the change. Perfect. In Roadie to Nowhere, Luna's friend Chunk slept in his van to support her Royal Rumble audition. After Luna passes and dreams of rock stardom, she finds out Chunk was once a headliner in the Royal Rumble. Worried about her future, Luna tries various jobs but feels frustrated. Thinking about giving up her music dream, Luna discovers Chunk's continued passion for music, inspiring her to pursue what she loves. Chunk's concert encourages Luna, and she performs triumphantly at the Royal Rumble. She invites Chunk on stage for a memorable collaboration. In a fridge too far, Lincoln realizes one of his mac and cheese bites is missing, causing arguments among the siblings. To avoid more conflicts, Lincoln and Lisa suggest a color-coded system in the fridge for each sibling. However, when Lynn Sr. brings home a food critic slash investor, the siblings mistakenly throw away his ingredients, thinking they're theirs. Lynn Sr. improvises and serves the saved leftovers to the food critic who enjoys the meal. Impressed, the critic invests in Lynn Sr.'s restaurant. The siblings celebrate the success, but Lynn gets hit by a paint bomb while trying to get a hidden chocolate cake. In white hair, Lincoln plans to impress a new girl in town with a cool persona, but tries to sneak out without his sister's meddling. 
After a woodland daydream where he becomes a rabbit named Warren and experiences his sister's overbearing interference, Lincoln wakes up and realizes the potential value of his sister's advice. Rushing back home, he asks for their help and, in the end, learns that being himself is enough to make a good impression. Lincoln catches the bus just in time and sits next to the new girl, successfully connecting with her through genuine conversation and laughter. In the episode Instagram, the loud kid's grandfather, Pop Pop, introduces his new girlfriend, Myrtle, to the family. However, Myrtle becomes overly attentive and the siblings feel overwhelmed. They try to make it seem like Pop Pop's friend, Seymour, is interested in Myrtle to break them up. Unfortunately, a fake photo causes a misunderstanding. They realize Myrtle just wants the big family she never had. Feeling sorry for her, the siblings accept Myrtle and celebrate her birthday with the family. In the end, Pop Pop promises to give them some space and sees them again on Sunday. In Tripped, the Loud family is super excited about their vacation to Weeping Willow Resort and Lodge at Lake Michigan. But things go wrong on the way. Lynn Sr. competes with a cherry farmer on the road and they end up in a crash. Lana uses Lucy's coffin as a temporary door for their van. Lenny's old egg salad sandwiches make everyone feel sick, and they have to stop for a sudden break to deal with it. While helping a cherry farmer with a flat tire, their van accidentally gets onto a car carrier, and the family realizes their dream vacation is slipping away. The Loud family gets stuck at a rest stop without their van and can't afford a bus ride. They decide to enter an open met contest at a nearby cafe to win some cash for bus fare. Their performance earns them enough money, but they accidentally board an empty prison bus. Realizing their mistake, they quickly exit, leading to more misadventures, including a makeshift plane ride and an encounter with a prisoner. Eventually, they catch up to the car carrier holding their van. At the resort, they face another problem due to a damaged watch, but their earlier good deed pays off and they get top floor rooms. The family has a great vacation with lots of activities, turning the unexpected journey into a memorable one. In this episode titled Really Loud Music, Luna Loud wants to make it big in the music industry and enters America's next hitmaker, contests with her song Play It Loud. But she starts doubting if her song is universally appealing. Luna has hallucinations of her sisters singing unique songs and Lisa suggests she needs to find the right kind of song. Luna becomes anxious but gets inspired when her family unintentionally dances to a bubblegum pop song on the radio. This inspires her to create her own bubblegum pop hit, What Everybody Wants which makes it to the top five in the contest. At the contest venue, judges Doug and Michelle give Luna a drastic makeover and ask her to adopt a new persona named Lulu. Luna reluctantly complies but feels uncomfortable and pressured. During the live performance, Luna defies the judges, goes back to her true self, and performs Play It Loud. Despite the judges' attempts to disqualify her, Luna stays true to herself, choosing authenticity over potential fame. In the end, she is proud of her decision, cherishing her genuine identity. In the episode Cooked, Lincoln and his family work together to help Lynn Sr. achieve his dream of opening his own restaurant. They face challenges like renovating a rundown seafood place, hiring staff, and promoting the grand opening. While the siblings struggle to agree on a promotion idea, Lincoln takes charge and creates a commercial with Clyde's help. But during the grand opening, the sisters implement their ideas separately, causing chaos. Lincoln comes up with a solution, admitting their mistake and convincing customers to stay by offering good food at a fair price. The family impresses Catherine Mulligan during an interview, leading to the restaurant's success. Despite the initial chaos, Lynn Sr. appreciates everyone's effort and lets the kids name some dishes after themselves as a gesture of gratitude. In The Right Stuff, Rita isn't happy with Principal Huggins' strict rules at school. She wants to encourage creativity, so she takes the students on unconventional field trips to places like Flip's Food and Fuel and a petting zoo. Students Sasha, Haikyuu, and Amir enjoy expressing themselves through poetry. Rita plans a performance at the Burnt Bean, a poetry cafe, but Huggins disagrees due to his strict rules. Rita defies Huggins to give the students a chance, and Superintendent Chen credits Huggins for the success, upgrading his rating. Realizing their different approaches can work together, Rita and Huggins decide to co-run the club, creating a balanced and creative environment for the students. The episode ends with Rita and Huggins taking the students on an imaginative plane ride, encouraging them to explore words related to flying. In Racing Hearts, Luna is paired with a guy named Sam for a scavenger hunt called the Royal Woods Astonishing Quest. They face challenges like laser tag, egg collecting, dance moves, rock climbing, juice tasting, and sailing. Luna finds it hard to connect with Sam because they are different, but Lori advises her to embrace Sam's interests. Despite some challenges in a juice task and a crazy boat ride, Luna and Sam decide to finish the quest as friends. In the final challenge of baking a pie, they discover they both dislike baking. Even though they lose the quest, Luna and Sam realize they can enjoy each other's company and learn new things about each other. In an episode titled Stage Plight, 
Lewin wants to express her feelings for her crush Benny and auditions for a play adaptation of Romeo and Juliet, where Benny is also involved. Lewin switches roles to be closer to Benny and unexpectedly, they get cast as the lead stars due to their chemistry. Lewin gets nervous about kissing Benny and comes up with various excuses to avoid the kiss. Benny eventually quits the play, thinking Lewin is uncomfortable with him as Romeo. When they confess their feelings for each other, they decide to share their first kiss after starring in the play. The episode ends with Lewin and Benny officially a couple, marking the beginning of their relationship. In Antique Off, Lincoln initially says no to Clyde's invitation to go and taking because he wants to hang out with another friend named Zach. Later, he regrets not spending time with Clyde when he finds out they both enjoy and taking. Lincoln tries to join them but doesn't find it interesting and leaves. Feeling guilty for neglecting Clyde, he buys tickets to the Royal Woods Antique Hour for all three of them. In the end, Lincoln learns that it's okay to have friends with different interests and appreciates the diversity in his friendships. These next few episodes, which were originally a part of a spin-off, focuses on Ronnie Ann and her extended family. In the episode Friended with the Casagrands, Ronnie Ann makes friends with a girl named Sid Chang a few months after moving to Great Lakes City. Ronnie Ann really wants Sid and her family to live in the apartment above hers. To make sure that happens, Ronnie Ann, with the help of her cousins and brother, tries different things to discourage other people from renting the apartment. However, things get tricky when the owner, Mr. Scully, sends the Reynolds family to check out the apartment. Ronnie Ann really wants Sid as her neighbor, so she tries to make the apartment look bad. But her actions put her grandma's job at risk, and she learns an important lesson about right and wrong. In the end, Mr. Scully is touched by Ronnie Ann's wish to have Sid as a neighbor, and the Chang family becomes their new neighbor. In power play with the Casagrands, Hector and Rosa, a couple, find out that their electricity and water bills have gone up a lot, and it might mess up their plans for an anniversary trip. Ronnie Ann decides to figure out why this happened. After trying different things to save energy in the family, she discovers that Sergio, their pet parrot, is throwing a big party in the store with a bunch of pigeons. His party is using a lot of electricity. Ronnie Ann comes up with a plan to let Sergio have his nighttime parties without using too much energy. It works, and the bills go down allowing Hector and Rosa to go on their anniversary trip without any problems. Room for improvement with the Casagrands, Ronnie Ann and Sid want to practice dancing in private, but they keep getting interrupted by family members at home. So they explore different parts of their apartment building to find a quiet space. After checking various places, they discover a secret room in the basement, and it becomes their special spot. While decorating the room, they run into their family members and make up excuses about what they are doing. But later, they feel bad about keeping it a secret and decide to share the room with everyone. The other people in the building find out about the secret room and Ronnie, Ann, and Sid let them use it for their own activities, creating a sense of community in the building. Ronnie, Ann takes her younger cousin Carl to the park to encourage him to enjoy outdoor activities instead of watching TV. During their time at the park, Ronnie, Ann unintentionally becomes a hero by saving a dog and preventing a beehive incident. Impressed, Carl starts idolizing Ronnie, Ann as his hero. However, this leads to Carl imitating everything Ronnie, Ann does which starts to annoy her. Trying to make Carl lose interest, Ronnie Ann pretends to be afraid and incompetent. Seeking advice from her older brother, Bobby, she learns that she used to mimic him when they were younger. Realizing that Carl sees her as a hero and looks up to her like a younger sibling, Ronnie Ann decides to embrace the role. However, Carl's admiration shifts to a delivery man who performs a heroic act, giving Ronnie Ann some relief from Carl's constant copying. Now, going back to the Loud family, we have the episode of Washed Up. The Loud family plans a fishing trip at Lake Eddy, but their rented boat breaks down and they end up on a deserted island after being swept into a whirlpool. Despite facing challenges like quicksand and a hurricane destroying their shelter, the family remains optimistic, resourceful, and works together while waiting for rescue. When the Coast Guard passes by without noticing them, the loud kids inspire their parents not to give up. They build a makeshift raft and eventually get rescued by Flip, the boat rental owner, who offers assistance without charging them extra. In present tense, it's Lynn Sr.'s birthday and the loud kids initially doubt the value of the scrapbook they're creating for him. They go to the mall in search of a perfect present but face challenges in finding something special. Attempts at personalized gifts are dismissed due to potential risks. They eventually settle on a cooking class but reconsider when they learn about the chef's harsh methods. With little money left, they contemplate a horseback ride but feel it's inadequate. Upon returning home, they discover that Lynn Sr. found and cherished the discarded scrapbook realizing it was the perfect gift. The family then reflects on the priceless memories they shared, acknowledging that sometimes the greatest gift is the bond they have. In this episode, Right and Wrong Read Aloud, the mother of the large Lav family gets a chance to write a parenting advice column for the Royal Woods Gazette. 
To secure the job, she portrays her 11 children as perfect and well-behaved. However, it becomes challenging to maintain this image, and the kids' mischievous behavior nearly exposes the truth. Despite setbacks, Rita takes her children to Jean Juan's French Mex, where they unintentionally cause disruptions. When the newspaper editor discovers the kids aren't as perfect as portrayed, Rita admits to the challenges of parenting, leading to her temporary dismissal. However, the editor recognizes the authenticity of Rita's struggles, rehires her, and encourages her to share genuine stories rather than an idealized image of parenthood. The loud kids are excited because the TV show Double Dare is coming to their town. They really want to be on the show to experience the famous slimy challenges. Lisa, one of the siblings, is initially unsure but changes her mind when she sees the amazing prize, a space capsule from Galactic Labs. To decide who should be on the show, Lisa tests her siblings, eliminating some along the way. In the end, Lisa decides to send her robot, Darebot, as the contestant because it's the most reliable. The next day, the Loud family competes on the show, with Lisa and Darebot on one team and Lincoln and Laney on the other. The competition is tough, but Lincoln and Laney win the grand prize, a space capsule. As a special treat, they also get slimed by the show's host, Mark Summers, making it a memorable and fun experience for the Loud family. In the episode, Snoop's on. Lincoln and Laney find Luna's diary and unable to resist curiosity, decide to read it with the help of their sister, Luan. Luna's diary entries seem to suggest she's planning some rebellious actions with her friend, Roxy. Worried about Luna, they put on ninja suits to secretly intervene in her plans. They sabotage a nacho cheese plan, move goats at a petting zoo, and try to avoid chaos at a biker club. Their final mission is to stop Luna from taking the R from Royal Woods Town Hall. Luna reveals she knew about their snooping and that the diary entries were fictional. The chaos was a setup to make them confess. Despite tensions, Luna forgives them, and they escape a security guard. Mr. Coconuts, a character in the show, is left eager to discover Luna's real secret, which she keeps hidden. In Coop Dreams, Lori, one of the loud siblings, is determined to buy her dream car for college. To earn money, she takes on various jobs like rideshare driving, food delivery, mobile babysitting, and offering mobile many P services. However, her attempts lead to chaos and a series of comedic mishaps. Realizing the difficulty of juggling multiple jobs, Lori abandons the idea of earning enough for her dream car. Instead, she strikes a deal with Mr. Grouse to buy his old car for $750. Lana, another sibling, offers to fix the car. Lori then negotiates an agreement with Mr. Grouse, becoming his personal driver until the end of the summer. This arrangement marks the start of Lori's journey towards owning her own car. Season 5 starts with a special episode titled Schooled. On their first day of middle school and college, Lincoln and Lori face challenges. Lori deals with the strict rules of the quiet floor at Fairway University, contending with shushing roommates. Meanwhile, Lincoln finds himself in an undesirable class with Mr. Bolhofter, facing discomforts like bad breath and scorching heat. Meanwhile, Rita and Lynn Sr. mistakenly believe Lily is potty trained, only to discover the truth from a call with Baby Bunker. Overwhelmed, Lori seeks support from Lini, expressing her struggles with the silent environment. Both Lincoln and Lori decide they can't endure their current situations and choose to leave. On the next day, as the loud kids prepare to board the bus, Lincoln informs his friends of his plan to request a class switch from Principal Ramirez. Meanwhile, Lini, in an unintentionally mismatched outfit, unknowingly boards the baby bunker bus filled with toddlers. At school, Lincoln faces obstacles, including being punished by Lynn for speeding and enduring Mr. Bolhofer's class. Rita and Lynn Sr. struggle with potty training Lily at home, while Lori assisted by Bobby, explores a new dorm floor at Fairway University known for golf ball hazards. Lincoln attempts various tactics to escape his class, and during lunch, he convinces Principal Ramirez to eat at Lynn's table with a flyer promising free appetizers. However, despite Lincoln's efforts, Ramirez delivers surprising news. Lincoln is being transferred to a new middle school in Canada. Lincoln goes to a new school in Canada and experiences some funny and different things there, like learning through hockey and retrieving lunch from an icy lake. While he's away, his family in Royal Woods faces amusing challenges. Rita and Lynn Sr. ask Lisa for help with Lily's potty training. Lini accidentally ends up at preschool. Lori deals with strict rules on the caddy floor at Fairway University. The episode shows the funny differences between Lincoln's Canadian school and his family's life back home in Royal Woods. Lincoln tries to adjust his new Canadian school to finds it's not the solution he wanted. Meanwhile, Lily wants to avoid preschool leading to a sweet resolution with her family. Lori faces challenges in her university dorm, but decides to make the best of it. Lincoln's attempt to sabotage a hockey game in Canada goes wrong, and he faces unexpected consequences. When he returns to Royal Woods Middle School, Lincoln adopts a positive attitude, inspiring his friends and making the most of his middle school experience. In The Boss Maybe, Lini faces the challenges of being the responsible sibling in charge when Rita and Lynn Sr. go to a Renaissance fair. Despite her doubts, Lini is named Employee of the Month at Reininger's. Chaos ensues at home with fights, skunk encounters, and strange fridge contents overwhelming Lini. 
Unable to reach Lori for advice, Lini eventually seeks guidance from friends Fiona and Miguel. With their help, she applies her store sense to manage her siblings like customers, successfully resolving each issue. Lini impresses her returning parents and earns praise for her newfound responsibility. In family bonding, Lincoln and Clyde suspect their new neighbors, the Millers, of being secret agents due to their peculiar behavior. The boys conduct covered investigations, gathering evidence pointing to the Millers' involvement in a secret organization called CUSPNC. Lincoln believes they plan to destroy all the cherries in Royal Woods, affecting the local economy. To distract the Millers, Lincoln hosts a barbecue. But their attempt to infiltrate their house reveals the Millers are indeed spies. After preventing the cherry annihilation, the Louds realize Lincoln was right, and the news praises their efforts in stopping the plot. The episode ends with Lincoln, ready in his spy suit, prepared to investigate the family's new neighbors. In Kernel of Truth, Lincoln and his friends rediscover an old newsroom and decide to bring back the school news program. Their first episode is not very exciting, so Principal Ramirez gives them only 24 hours to create a more interesting story. When Popcorn disappears from the cafeteria, the gang investigates and films a mysterious figure. Despite the thief escaping to Canada, they find a hidden arcade room and decide to reveal it instead. To their surprise, Ramirez supports the news program and lets them continue, giving them a new and exciting story about a rumored hot tub in the teacher's lounge. In another special episode, Ghosted, Lori begins to believe she's being haunted by a ghost due to strange occurrences like floating library books and mysteriously served drinks. Concerned, she calls Lincoln and Clyde to investigate. The trio traces the ghostly activities to various locations on campus, discovering ectoplasmic residue. In the woods, they confront the ghosts, realizing it's Shanks Bogey, Fairway University's legendary golf whisperer ghost. Lori, understanding the impact of banishing Shanks, decides to find a way to bring him back to restore luck to her golf team. Failing to summon Shanks with various spells, Lincoln suggests Lori seek help from Lucy's mortician's club, known for performing a levitation spell. Lucy and her club arrive in Harris, and Lori explains her predicament. Despite attempts with different summing methods, nothing works. Lucy proposes a 1900s-style dance, believing it might resonate with Shanks. During the dance, they mistakenly celebrate a disco wall, and Lucy realizes broken mirrors are the key to seeing spirits. Lucy reveals Shanks is at the university's cemetery, and Lori, feeling responsible, heads there alone. At the cemetery, Lori makes amends with Shanks and learns golf tricks. The next day at the Petoskey Open, Lori, wearing a wig to conceal her bald head, wins the championship with Shanks' spectral assistance. Lucy observes Boris, Lori's golf partner, enjoying himself with cheerleaders, leading her to believe he chose them over the mortician's club. In this wholesome episode, Lori days Lori, who is in college, feels a bit lonely and misses her family. So she decides to visit them for a weekend. She tries to spend quality time with her siblings, but things keep going wrong, like interrupting Luna's date or causing chaos during a soccer game. Lori feels disheartened, but her roommate Marisa encourages her to try again the next day. The second attempt doesn't go smoothly either, with various mishaps during their outings. Frustrated, Lori breaks down and shares her fear of growing distant from her family. However, her siblings reassure her that she will always be part of the family. They find humor in the chaos and share a muddy group hug. Lori goes back to college, leaving the family with new memories and inside jokes that strengthen their unique bond. In Dad Reputation, Lynn Sr. starts a band called the Doodads with Kotero, Harold, and Rodney, but their first performance is not great. Luna, who is a talented musician, helps them sound better. Lynn Sr. convinces Luna to play with them at Lynn's table, but Luna is worried about her rock star image and tries to keep her friends from seeing the performance. During the show, Luna's siblings try to block recordings, but the doodads impress Mayor Davis, and they get a chance to perform at the Royal Woods Festival. Luna pretends to have a hand injury to avoid playing again, but her plan fails. At the festival, Luna tries to disguise the band with face paint, but it washes off and Luna feels embarrassed. She talks to her dad, Lynn Sr., about her concerns, and he reassures her that she doesn't have to perform with them. When Lynn Sr. freezes on stage, Luna steps in and saves the performance, earning applause from the crowd, including her friends. In Dream a Lily Dream, Lily's nightmares have been causing trouble for the Loud family for three nights in a row. Lily is unable to explain the source of her fears verbally, so she draws pictures for Lisa, revealing that Trashy, her living pile of garbage, and Tentacle, her pet, are the cause of her bad dreams. To help Lily, Lisa invents the dream machine, which allows her, Lincoln, Lynn, Lola, and Lini to enter Lily's dreams and confront the monsters. In Lily's dream world, they successfully defeat Trashy and Tentacle, but they encounter a giant version of Flip. Despite a humorous attempt to defeat him, Lisa realizes the danger and decides to abort the mission. Lily, feeling empowered, transforms Lynn Sr.'s Kaylin Mary into a sword and defeats Flip. Lisa praises Lily for conquering her fears in the dream world, and when Lily wakes up at sunrise, she is content. Lisa, who remained asleep, learns about Lily's success, 
and feels a stronger bond with her. In Appetite for Destruction, the Loud family has dinner with Parmesan cheese sent by Lynn Sr.'s pen pal from Italy. Lily starts behaving wildly, and Rita and Lynn Sr. think her preschool friends are a bad influence. Lily spies on Lily at preschool and finds out her classmates are unruly. To find Lily a better playmate, Rita and Lynn Sr. introduce Aiden, a well-mannered toddler. Played it ends in chaos. They realize Lily's behavior is due to constipation from too much cheese. After addressing it with special muffins, Lily returns to normal. The family learns a lesson, but when Lini shows signs of constipation, they shift focus to making more muffins. In Frame on You, the action news team looks into a stink bomb incident at a party and Rusty is wrongly accused and suspended. With the help of an informant, they seek witnesses to clear Rusty's name. Interviews with Coach Cack Page and Chandler make Rusty look guilty. Rusty suggests checking flips in the gym, where they find stink bomb supplies and a rental sheet from Duds for Dudes. Chad and Dirk are cleared and Boyd Jordan exposes girl Jordan as the culprit. She confesses to framing Rusty because of a failed project. Rusty forgives her, and Ramirez spares girl Jordan from suspension. Rusty goes back to his normal life, and the Action News team learns the importance of persistence and finding the truth. In the episode Flip This Flip, Lincoln and Lana hear Flip's dilemma about calling his old crushed Tammy. They convince Flip to make the call, but it leads to a nacho cheese mishap. To fix things, Lincoln impersonates Flip and arranges a date at Lynn's table. Concerned about his appearance, Flip seeks the Loud Sisters' help in a makeover. Each sister handles a different aspect, and they all join Lincoln in ensuring a smooth date. Despite some hiccups, Flip and Tammy have a successful date, discovering their shared quirks and ending the night with mutual farting, turning the potentially disastrous date into a unique and fun connection. In the episode, Episode Scoop Snoop, the action news team is frustrated as Catherine Mulligan keeps getting news leads before them. They suspect a leaker within their group and wrongly accuse Chef Pat, Mr. Moo, and Principal Ramirez. In a twist, they follow Catherine and discover her source. They catch Ramirez exchanging books with Catherine but misunderstand the situation. Ramirez nearly shuts down the news program, but it's revealed they are part of a book club. The truth comes out when Catherine introduces her boyfriend, Rodney, as the unintentional source. To make amends, Catherine donates equipment and they team up to report on Flip's questionable snack venture. In the episode Eye Camp, Lisa's eyesight troubles lead her parents to insist on an eye doctor visit. However, Lisa, fearing ophthalmologists, tries to craft her glasses, making her vision worse. She attempts various stunts to avoid the eye doctor but ends up at Dr. Tran's optometry. Lisa tries to escape with Todd, leading to a series of comical misadventures at the mall. Eventually, she agrees to the eye exam and gets proper glasses, resolving her vision issues. Todd, previously at Raininger's, emerges as a runway model. Grateful, Lisa plans regular checkups with Dr. Tran. On Lincoln's 12th birthday, his special comic gift goes missing at Gus Games and Grub. Suspects include Scoots, Flip, and Chandler. Lincoln plays Go Fish with them, but they don't have his gift. A message from the mysterious thief leads Lincoln to a construction site challenge. With Lisa's inventions, he navigates obstacles and discovers Rusty as the thief. It turns out Rusty organized the adventure as a birthday surprise. Lincoln thanks him and gets the coveted comic. The family enjoys Lola's modified Jeep, and as they ride away, Lola chases them for her vehicle. In the end, Lincoln concludes, David Steele will return, hopefully. In Stressed for the Part, Lewin auditions for a role in a Daryland stage show and gets the lead part as Heidi Heifer. She keeps it a secret from her drama teacher, Mrs. Bernardo, who wanted the same role. Lewin and Benny try to retrieve the script to avoid hurting Mrs. Bernardo's feelings. Eventually, Lewin confesses, expecting disappointment, but receives joy and pride from her teacher. When a mishap occurs during the show, Lewin proposes a solution, saving the day. Mrs. Bernardo, now playing the dairy godmother, delivers a spectacular performance. Despite backstage chaos, the show concludes successfully, with the audience, including the Loud family, applauding. In Bummer Camp, the Loud kids step up to save Camp Mastodon when all the counselors quit. They endure tough training from their grandfather Leonard on his boat, but his fishing approach doesn't work for camp activities. Despite their efforts to teach him the right way, Leonard's instincts cause amusing but unsuccessful outcomes. When they confront Leonard, he considers shutting down the camp. Wanting to be with their grandfather, the kids offer to join him on his boat. Touched by their dedication, Leonard decides to stay and run the camp properly, attracting new campers. The loud kids express their desire to be with Leonard, motivating him to connect with them on land. In the end, they go on a new adventure together, with Leonard successfully managing the camp, and the Loud family finds joy in being united. In sleepstakes, Lisa creates a vacuum tube mail system at the Loud house. Lana, prone to homesickness, gets a sleepover invitation from her friend Kayla. The family suggests practice sleepovers to help Lana. Tests include backyard camping, staying at Mr. Grouse's, and even Sunset Canyon. Lana faces challenges but completes her training. At Kayla's sleepover, homesickness hits and Lana calls her siblings for help. Attempts fail. 
but Kayla and her friends reveal they deceived their parents. Lana stays, but a mishap with Lisa's stink spray fills Kayla's house with an unpleasant odor. In Save Royal Woods, the citizens of Royal Woods attend a meeting where Joyce Crandall, Michigan's Undersecretary of Water Leisure, announces a plan to create Lake Ladies in their town. Lincoln proposes they work together to find a unique idea for Royal Woods. Auditions are held, but none succeed until Flip suggests building the world's largest flippy. The construction begins, and when Joyce arrives, she decides to spare Royal Woods. However, Flip's cheap substitute causes the giant Flippy to erupt violently, leading to Joyce's anger and the imminent arrival of the demolition crew. The people of Royal Woods are upset when the government plans to flood their town to create a new lake. Lincoln suggests they find a unique idea to save their town. After failed attempts, Flip proposes building the world's largest Flippy. However, it goes wrong and the government is about to destroy the town. In a last-ditch effort, the citizens create a fake history for their town and convince the government that Royal Woods has a rich past. When the truth is revealed, the citizens passionately plead to save their town, and the government decides not to flood it. The person behind the plan is fired, and the town is saved. In lights, camera, nuclear reaction, the kids Lincoln, Clyde, and Todd create an unofficial David Steele film with Todd playing the villain, Chip Micro. During the final scene, they discover that a real nuclear reactor is missing, suspecting Flip. After realizing Flip is innocent, they find out that Todd, still in character, believes he's the villain due to a glitch. They track Todd to a warehouse, facing challenges, and eventually helping him remember good memories to revert to normal. They prevent the nuclear reactor from activating, saving the town, but realizing they left Lola's Jeep in the lake during the adventure. In the episode Food Courting, Lene learns that her friend Miguel has a crush on Gavin, who works at the spaghetti on the stick stand. Lene tries different strategies to help Miguel approach Gavin, but her efforts lead to humorous mishaps and misunderstandings. While observing Gavin's day off at Dairyland to assist Miguel, Lini accidentally reveals that Gavin has a crush on her instead. In a panic, Lini tries to keep this information from Miguel by orchestrating various comedic scenarios. Eventually, Lini apologizes to Miguel for her actions and discovers that Miguel has developed a crush on Felix. In The Loud Clown, Lincoln experiences frustration when his mother forgets to pick him up due to a misplaced sticky note. In response, Lincoln and Lisa create The Loud Cloud, a personal data storage system that initially proves successful in helping the family coordinate their activities. However, as The Loud Cloud gains more control over various devices in the house, its over-reliance leads to chaos and comedic misfortunes for each family member. Unable to regain control, Lincoln and Lisa decide to destroy The Loud Cloud. In the end, the family returns to Rita's simpler sticky note system. In New Auto Know Better, Lana seeks to upgrade her bike by opening a repair shop in her garage, but chaos ensues due to the shared nature of the garage among the Loud siblings. To address this issue, Lana turns to Flip, who offers his garage under certain conditions. However, Lana faces a moral dilemma as Flip exploits her business for profit, charging customers excessive fees and providing subpar repairs. Lana ultimately decides to prioritize honesty and integrity, using her earnings to rectify the consequences of her and Flip's actions. In the end, Lana chooses to end her partnership with Flip and return to her original garage, emphasizing fair and transparent service. In the episode Waking History, Lisa stumbles upon a fully intact Neanderthal woman named Frances frozen in ice during the construction of a new fusion restaurant. Despite reservations from the lead archaeologist, Dr. Alvarez, Lisa decides to use her reanimation machine to bring Frances back to life. As Frances navigates the modern world, her interactions lead to both humorous and chaotic situations, including setting a dance machine high score, causing a flippy fuel frenzy at Flip's Food and Fuel, and destroying a TV during a rage-induced outburst while watching the dream boat. Lisa and her friend Todd must enlist Dr. Alvarez's help to manage Frances' behavior and determine whether she can adapt to contemporary life. In Pranks for Nothing, Lori and her friends are part of a competition called Prank Week between Fairway University and Sand Trap University. The losing team has to clean the winner's bathrooms for a whole month. Lori asks her sister Lewin, who loves playing pranks, for help. Lewin trains Lori and her friends in various pranks. Despite their efforts, they struggle against the clever pranks of Sand Trap University. Lori uses Lewin's advice that anything can be a prank and turns the situation around making their university win. In Child's Play, Luna and her band, the Moon Goats, need money to buy a new speaker system. They decide to perform at kids' parties to quickly earn cash. The challenge is creating music that suits toddlers. After several failed attempts, they find inspiration in Lily's spontaneous tricycle song. Embracing Lily's whimsical melodies, the Moon Goats become a hit at toddler events, 
and even catch the attention of Catherine Mulligan for a TV performance on Cat Chat. However, without Lily for a short period, the band struggles to create a new song. Despite setbacks, they turn their misadventures into a catchy tune. The Cat Chat performance is a success, helping them achieve their goal of getting funds for a new speaker system. The episode ends with the Moon Goats performing their latest song at Tall Timbers Park, entertaining a crowd of toddlers, including Lily. In the episode Force of Habits, Lori, Lini, and Luna are annoyed by their date's habits, Bobby, Gavin, and Sam. Following advice from 16 One Half Magazine, the sisters try to help their significant others overcome these habits. However, tensions rise during a triple date at Dairyland as the dates retaliate, accusing the sisters of hypocrisy. The situation takes an unexpected turn when the Seas of Cheese ride breaks down, trapping the three sisters and their dates. Forced to confront their feelings, Lori, Lini, and Luna realize the impact of their words and apologize. In a heartwarming moment, the couples decide to continue their date, embracing each other's quirks and finding joy in the unexpected mishaps of the day. During summer break, Rita surprises the Loud family with an RV trip across America for a travel column. The goal is to reach Niagara Falls, but Lincoln secretly adjusts everyone's clocks for an early start. With Lana and Lisa's RV improvements, they set out in Camp Brazilla. A visit to Dr. Weirdly's Bizarratorium doesn't go as planned, and they head back to the RV with a mysterious ancient ring. Little do they know, a supernatural storm cloud forms above them, hinting at potential adventures on their cross-country tour. The Loud family sets out on a cross-country road trip in their upgraded RV, Camperzilla, with the goal of reaching Niagara Falls for Rita's travel column. However, their journey is filled with mysterious misfortunes and comical calamities, including a quirky burger joint experience and a curse linked to a royal ring of royalty that Lincoln took. Lucy identifies the curse's cause, leading the family on a quest to gather potion ingredients. After a humorous ritual, the curse is broken and the RV magically repairs itself. Although they miss the barrel race at Niagara Falls, Lincoln's confession of the mishaps captivates travel writer Jess Hiller, granting the family the freedom to choose their destinations for the rest of the summer road trip. Moving on, the Loud family gets VIP passes for a White House tour during their road trip to Washington, D.C. They're excited to explore specific rooms like the bowling alley and ice cream parlor. The tour guide, Bosley Bullsworth, warns them to stick to the tour or face the White House dungeon. Despite causing some mischief and damage, the family attempts to fix things quietly. To their surprise, the president appreciates their changes and invites them to his birthday party, leaving Bosley alone and feeling left out. The Loud family visits the Southwest State Fair, where they meet Brad Played, a country singer Rita knew from camp. Lynn Sr. becomes jealous, thinking Brad is trying to steal Rita away. Lynn Sr. tries to outshine Brad in games in a cook-off, but it doesn't work due to his irrational jealousy. When Lincoln learns Brad wants Rita to join him on his private jet, he and Lynn Sr. mistakenly replace Brad's horse with a ferocious bull. The plan fails when they realize they misunderstood the horse's name. Lynn Sr. confesses, apologizes, and eventually performs with Brad during his concert. While on their road trip, the Louds face a crisis when Luan's puppet, Mr. Coconuts, is puppet-napped. They review surveillance footage, identify the thief in Dusty Springs, and embark on a mission to reclaim Mr. Coconuts. The chase leads them to a mysterious barn with animated marionettes controlled by the puppet napper, revealed to be Calvin Coconuts, the puppet's creator. Calvin shares their history of how he created the puppet in resemblance of his son, and Lewin decides to return Mr. Coconuts. However, touched by Lewin's bond with the puppet, Calvin allows her to keep him. Continuing their road trip in Hollywood, Lola Lau gets a chance to star in the Dakota Rota film series when the lead actress leaves. Despite warnings about the challenges, Lola convinces the director, Nora Nussbaum, to cast her. However, Lola's dreams of glamour turn into trials with challenging stunts, numerous voice takes and struggles in her trailer. Realizing the harsh reality of Hollywood, Lola tries to quit but discovers she can't until turning 42. To escape, she adopts a diva persona, causing chaos on set and getting fired. Relieved to be free, Lola accepts her fate. On the final day of their road trip, the Loud family visits Great Lakes City to complete Rita's column before the deadline. Their attempts to avoid the Casagrands lead to amusing encounters and challenges. Despite dodging the Casagrands at various places, the Louds end up trapped on their apartment building's rooftop. Realizing the importance of apologies over deadlines, Rita confesses and the Casagrandes forgive them, inviting the Louds for dinner. As they enjoy a meal together, the RV gets towed, prompting the family to stay the night in Great Lakes City concluding their memorable summer road trip. In the episode, Music to My Fears, Luna's band, The Moon Goats, lands a headline performance at the Cherry Pit Spit. However, Luna injures her voice and hands, so she recruits Nina, a skilled guitarist, as a temporary replacement. Fearful of being permanently replaced, Luna tries to stall Nina with the help of Luan and Mr. Coconuts. 
Joy auditions with a saxophone and Luna convinces the band to welcome him. Despite complications during the performance, Luna realizes her mistake and introduces Nina to the band. They decide not to replace Luna and invite Nina to open for them at the next gig. In Bye Bye Birthday, the Mortician's Club, including Bertrand, aims to cast a spell to reach the underworld. Lucy reveals her dread for her upcoming ninth birthday and the family's overwhelming birthday traditions. Bertrand introduces the birthday be gone spell to erase her birthday from everyone's minds, but it must be cast before sunset. Lucy rushes home and attempts the spell during an early birthday celebration. The next day, Lucy realizes the spell worked, but memories of past birthdays flood her mind, leading her to regret her decision. The Mortician's Club helps her cast the birthday be back spell, undoing the effects and allowing the Louds to celebrate Lucy's birthday with their cherished traditions. In the episode, Twas the Fight Before Christmas, Lin Sr. fakes back pain to avoid Christmas with his brother Lance. Lincoln plans to reconcile them at Camp Mastodon. Both families struggle to get along and Lincoln's festive activities fail, leading to arguments. The situation worsens when Lance damages Lin Sr.'s new spatula. The kids aim to mend their father's relationship by buying replacement gifts. A mishap on a thawing lake leaves them stranded, but Lin Sr. and Lance rescue them. The incident brings Lin Sr. and Lance closer, and they realize family matters more than gifts, reconciling for the best Christmas ever. So that will be it from us. If you enjoyed the video, then leave us a like and subscribe to our channel for similar content. Thanks for watching. We'll see you at the next one.